Hi, this is Mark Bowser and welcome to another episode of Kitchen Table Insights. Today we want to talk about leadership. It was author John Maxwell who said, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And that is so true. Every success that you have had, and every success that I have had, and every success that you and I will have in the future has to do with how effective we are at leading. And the first thing we do is we lead ourselves. We have to lead ourselves in character and in personal development and so forth. And once we lead ourselves, then we can broaden our leadership out to lead other people. Now the challenge is that I believe in America today, we have a leadership vacuum. And what I mean by that is this, is that you do not have effective leaders across the board in our organizations, in corporate America, as well as financial institutions, public school institutions, and other organizations and associations as well. Now, why is that? That's a good question. I think a lot of it is, is they don't know how to lead. I have a family member who uh, works at a, a very, very large organization, and she will share with me some of her frustrations knowing that what I do as a leadership trainer and author and so forth, and some of the stuff that she'll share with me, I'm just dumbfounded because the leaders in her organization are breaking the basic of basic rules. Leadership 101. And it's amazing at what they do or not do. Now, why does that happen? Well, I think that you have people who are afraid to make the big calls at the top. For example, in this particular organization, the, the top leader realizes some of the leadership issues that are going on because some people have shared that with them, some people in leadership, and said, hey, we got to get rid of this person here, and this person here in that position is not doing a very good job. And you know what that top leader said? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, oh, that, 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 that leader's husband works in, in the organization too, and oh, I don't know. You know, it's just going to cause all kinds of problems. If I, if I fire her, then her husband's going to get upset. So what? Here's how I believe about it. You see, if you have a leader in a position, yes, it is sad if you can't get people to step up and you have to get them off the bus, as Jim Collins would say. Now, the challenge is this. If you don't remove that person off the bus, they're impacting the entire bus itself. Because you see, a leader does not stay in a vacuum. A leader impacts many people. And so if you have a rotten leader, they are impacting many people who, they, who follows them or supposed to follow them. And so you have to eliminate the problem. Now, hopefully you can get that problem to become a possibility by that person stepping up and being trained and developed and being resilient and ready for those type of things. But if they don't, you gotta get them off the bus. John Maxwell, he talked about one time that he was having dinner with a, a particular guy who was a leader of an organization and what they would do is this organization would go in and they would buy up struggling organizations and they would turn them around and make them profitable again. And so John was just curious. He says, hey, what's the first thing you do? When you, when you guys buy an organization, you begin to turn it around, what's the first thing you do? And the guy looked at John and he goes, well, we fire the leader. And John thought, well, that, that's, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? And the guy looked right at John and he goes, well, wait a minute, John, think about it. If the guy or gal was any good, the company wouldn't be in the situation they're in. So we get rid of the person, the challenge that is causing the problem with everybody else. Now, that does sound harsh. And it sounds like I'm into fire. I'm not into firing. I'm in developing of people. But if the people will not be developed, and that's a choice, if somebody will not step up, you got to get them off the bus. And you got to get the right people on the bus. And that's key. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So what exactly is leadership? Well, the best definition I've ever heard is one that J. Oswald Sanders said many, many years ago. He defined leadership as influence. Nothing more, nothing less. And the truth of the matter is, is that you and I influence a number of people every single day. It might be as simple as you influencing somebody at your workplace of where to go to lunch today. Or it may be as important as influencing your teenage daughter not to get on drugs. But we all influence and we all persuade. 
and we all persuade in a positive direction or a negative direction. Now let me just say something that's probably going to startle you for just a moment, and it is not politically correct, so I'll just say that right here. Hitler was a good leader. Now, before you turn this off and leave, let me explain what I'm talking about. Based on the definition that leadership is influence, Hitler was effective. He influenced a number of people. Now, he was a rotten leader, and he was an evil leader. And so how do we put that into balance? If we say that Hitler was effective in terms of what he was able to accomplish, but we also say that he was evil, which is true, how do we balance that out? Well, we've been talking a little bit about John Maxwell today. Well, John wrote a tremendous book I highly recommend for all of you called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And in that, he has 21 laws that if you follow the laws, people will follow you. Now, it's a law. You see, a law does not care whether you're a good person or a bad person. A law does not care whether you love people or hate people. A law is a law, and it acts accordingly based on the principles of the law itself. For example, I guarantee you, if you climb up to the top of your roof at your house and you jump off, you will understand and believe in the law of gravity. Now, that's true whether you're a good person or a bad person. If you're a bad person and you get up on the top of your roof and you jump, you will know the law of gravity works. But if you're a good person and you get up on the top of your roof and you take a leap, you will know that the gravity, the law of gravity works because it's a law. After the success of the 21 Year of Laws of Leadership, a friend of John's came up to him and said, you know, I was just curious, John. If a bad person followed the 21 laws, would they be effective? And John thought, uh-oh. Yeah, they would. See, that's how we explain Hitler. Hitler followed the laws of leadership in many ways. He was very influential. And he got a lot of people to follow him blindly in many cases. But he, again, he was an evil person. And so John wrote a second book called The 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader. You see, the qualities of the leader, the character, the integrity of who you are comes first. And then you have the laws of leadership that you put into practice. And so together makes that balance. Together creates that great leadership. Who you are and what you do. That's what leadership is. And so I encourage you, pick up those two books of John's, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and The 21 Indispensable Qualities of Leadership, of a Leader. Those two books can help you understand the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative, the ebb and flow, of why you have to have the qualities of a leader and you have to have the understanding of what the laws of leadership are as well. You marry those two things together, qualities and laws, you will be a leader and you will influence people and we can begin to change this vacuum of a leadership challenge here in America and have leadership heavy and leadership driven organizations. Thanks for listening today. Make it a great day. God bless you.